worse yet, seeking the world to pat you on the back and say, well, gosh darn it, aren't you a nice church body? These are the idols and lies that Jeremiah had to hear spoken in the midst of him proclaiming the Lord's truth and the lies that we hear spoken around us, the lies that we see lived in death styles, not life styles, death styles of falsehood and degeneracy, all called good by the satanic ticks that have embedded themselves in the world and in the churches. Those temples fall. Those houses collapse. Those places are not of God. And the time is coming. Not only did it come for Jerusalem, not only did the temple fall in 70 AD, not only does all of that come to an end, but the birth of a diaspora of Christians across the world, but it will come to an end again when this earth, this solar system, this galaxy, this universe, this creation in which we dwell is shattered to bits and torn down till there's not one block upon another. And it is surely coming when Jesus returns and the rocks melt and the oceans burn, when the universe rolls up like a banner in the nothingness to be replaced with that which is perfect and better, which is purified and clean, which is made whole and tick-proof. This temple in which we dwell that he made with his hands will fall. One block will not be left upon another. But we who have dwelt in the truth, who seek him by the confession he has stated, that seek him in the waters of his baptism, not ours, of his supper, not ours, of his work, not ours, who dare by confession of faith and love and hope to wear his clothes, to dwell in his house, to do his thing, as he calls and enlightens and empowers, the universe falls away and we still remain purified and new for eternal life and a new creation, unembedded by the ticks of Satan, but set free in Jesus, who we build in his name. Amen.
the President of these United States, all our government officials and military personnel, and all rulers of all nations, that peace and the word and will of God might be on their hearts and minds, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. For Matthew, David, and Carl, our shepherds and bishops in Christ, that they might be upheld by the Holy Spirit as ministers of the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the enemies of Christ's church and his gospel, that they might nevertheless be blessed by him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the sick and the suffering in our midst, especially Rachel, Marie, Diane, Bill, Ryan, Sue, Kevin, Robin, Mark, Rob, Kathy, Bernie, Margaret, Abby, Shelley, David, Nicholas, Margie, Landon, Tabitha, Mira, Ezekiel, Patricia, Rich, Debbie, Richard, Jeff, and Rhonda. That Christ would be their good physician of body and soul in every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all people in need or distress throughout the world, for all those to whom death is drawing near, and for us all, that when our last hour may come, we may depart this life with the confidence of a true faith, a right to be vowed in a holy hope, and together with all the faithful, be seated at the wedding feast of the Lamb, his kingdom which has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, strengthen, deliver, and preserve us. For you alone we ascribe all glory, honor, and power, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Peace of the Lord. 